Hi everyone, welcome to box 21 of Hoop Club. So this is a little um, overview of what's in the box. I'm going to talk to you about the kit and um, what the thinking was behind the kit and also just go through both projects and show you how we do them. So this is what's in the box. So this is our box for this month. Um, I love the colours, a load, load of pink and spring kind of green. So we've got our magazine that shows you everything you need to know, all the instructions, there's lots, lots this month. That's your little magazine and then you've got all the thread, the colours, so good. Then we've included a little chocolate bar this month. And then we've got two kits. So you've got all the fabric and all the wadding and everything you need to make these two kits. So we'll start with the heart sampler. So I'm gonna go through each of these stitches and show you how we do them. So the first step is to get your fabric in your hoop. So unscrew the bigger hoop for the heart sampler. And then just trying to get the design in the center. So you put the bigger hoop over the top and then push it over the smaller hoop. So you've got it central, so just tighten the screw and then tug gently at the sides. You don't want to distort the shape of the design. So do, um, do just tug gently and then Tighten the screw again. And just keep doing that all around the edges until you feel like it's nice and tight, like a drum. The tighter it is, the easier it is to, to stitch onto. Um, so that's our fabric in our hoop. Now we're gonna split our thread. We're gonna thread our needle, but to do that we need to split the thread. So with all of these different stitches, we'll be using a slightly different amount of thread for each stitch. So embroidery thread is made up of six strands. So each strand contains six smaller strands of thread. So splitting your thread, you cut your length of thread, 40 to 50 centimetres, and then you pull away the amount of threads that you need. So for the trellis stitch, we don't need to split it, but I've just read those instructions. Um, but for some of the other stitches, you will need to stitch. So, well, we do need to split the red thread actually for the trellis stitch, but um, I'll show you that when I do it. But just bear in mind that each of the stitches has a different um, thread kind of count that you'll need to look out for. So we're going to start with the trellis stitch. We're going to start with the yellow. Just going to thread my needle and then I'm going to tie a knot at one end. So I've tied a knot and I've left a little tail of like 10 centimetres. Don't make the mistake of doubling up and tying the two lengths of thread, you know, the two ends together. That's um, we don't do that in, um, in embroidery. We don't do that. Sound like I'm telling a child off. So, trellis stitch. This is such a lovely stitch. So, we have um, printed the guide for you to make it as easy as possible. But the idea is to do a long stitch horizontally and then vertically to create the kind of trellis. And then with the red thread, we will, at the point that the yellow thread crosses over on itself, we are gonna secure it with a little red stitch. So I am doing my long stitches. So we're now going to go over, I've got 
two strands of red thread on my needle and we're going to go over all the crossing points of the yellow thread and we're going to secure with a little red, a diagonal red stitch. So keep all your diagonals consistent, so decide which way you want to go. I'm going top to bottom, right to left, left to right. Um, and yeah, we're going to go and join all of those stitches. You might want to keep referring to the picture just in case you are unsure. So some of these edge stitches um, where they kind of meet but they don't cross, we're leaving those um, uncovered. So, but as, as always, these things are um, up to you. You kind of go do what you want to do um, and what you think looks good and refer to the picture if you need guidance and always know that you can just ask any questions if you're unsure. This is very satisfying. So Christine, our designer, designed this month's kit and so this is the first time that I'm stitching it so it's really fun for me as well. So we've got little markers in there to show you as well where your little diagonal stitches should go. So this is a bit of a lesson in neatness and keeping those red stitches nice and small. So now I'm moving on to satin stitch. So this is the heart that we're stitching with satin stitch. So I've got four strands of lilac thread on my needle. So I'm gonna save the two strands from there to use on the next um, length of thread. So with satin stitch, we it's a really lovely stitch, but it um, it's better on smaller areas. So what we've done is divide up the heart into um, different kind of sections of satin stitch um, because it just looks if you were trying to do your satin stitch across the whole of this heart and um, it wouldn't look that good it would just get a bit baggy and um, yeah it just it's just nicer and neater in smaller sections so the way I like to do satin stitch is focus on a section Add in some starter stitches and then go back and fill in the gap. So you may have a different way that you like to do this, but you can just start with all of your stitches as close to each other as possible and, and kind of aim to get that satin effect straight away. But I quite like going back and forth and filling in the, the gaps. So I'm just going to keep going like that and then fill in the gap. So the same goes um, for this stitch as for the trellis stitch, which is just be mindful of your tension. Don't pull them, your stitches too tight or you'll get some puckering, but you don't want them too loose either. So just a nice very hard to describe, but a nice kind of tension. So where your stitches are meeting this line of existing stitches, you're just aiming to go down as close to those stitches as possible, almost down the same hole that they use to come up um, so you don't get any gaps. So that's my satin stitch done. 